Today on Logan Lee Adventures, we dive further into Chicago's food scene, biting into Chicago style hot dogs, beef brisket, and then go on location to Mr. Beef, the restaurant where the bear is filmed. There's also a lot more art and architecture splendor from this great American city. We're exploring all of the classics in Chicago, including Portillo's for Chicago style hot dogs. Yep, apparently Chicago has their own hot dog style. I want to taste it. Let's see what's the difference between regular hot dogs and Chicago style. Wow, this is a great interior for the Portillo's restaurant. Feel true Americana here. Man, look at that, there's even stars glowing on the ceiling. There's so many different things hanging around. There's like barnyard feeling design to it. This is so cool. Oh, there's even like an old timey vintage car. Like a time warp here. Look at this classic, Portillo hot dogs. Come to mama. Now this is a mean true Chicago style hot dog. They don't play around with the toppings here. We have tomatoes, we have some pickles, and this is jalapeno, some mustard slab there, some green onions, some regular onions, and then the jumbo dog itself. And then you really got us a salted caramel milkshake. This is a size small. Can you believe that? I love this. This is so good. It's so juicy. And the toppings. They make it. I can see why this is a Chicago style hot dog. And what makes this a Chicago style hot dog compared to say a regular hot dog. While I was trying to figure out where to go in Chicago, what to check out, I feel like a place that's really understated and almost kind of forgotten in a way is the Chicago Cultural Center. Y'all, this place is open every single day of the week and it's for free. So it's free admission to see these beautiful artworks made by the locals. I love this so much. The light exhibition that's happening right now, the exhibition is called Dutch Yellow and it really sets different moods from the feeling and the ambiance from the light.
think there's a performance, a live musical performance happening right now at the Chicago Cultural Center, as you can hear. It sounds so beautiful. I feel like I'm in a movie. Now it's time for some good old barbecue, Chicago style of course. This is the beloved Blackwood Barbecue, which is noted for the barbecued beef brisket smoked 14 whopping hours with hickory and applewood. One of its nice touches is the ground coffee in the dry rub. Yurun and I have never had brisket before, so this will be our first time. And hey, I don't think you can go wrong with this new frontier in Chicago's downtown core. It's so deliciously fatty. Look at this. Like, you can go lean in between or fatty, but I'm so glad we went with fatty. And this is Chicago style sauce. So it's like sweet and spicy. And then we got some coleslaw, some pickles, you know, classic. And then we have mac and cheese coming right up as well with our. Oh, there it is. Ooh, so hot. All right, this is quite unconventional, but I'm in a Macy's in the loop of Chicago. And check this out. There's a, there's a whole fountain here. And look at all of these Greek style colonnades. That's because this Macy's used to be, well, it still is a historical site. This was the old Marshall Field and Company building. And then Macy's eventually moved in, took it over, refurbished it, and it's not quite the or same, but they still pay respect to while preserving it. Now this is why, as an architecture lover, you should make this Macy's a pit stop on your Chicago adventures. Just come inside, have a peek at all these beautiful balcony, and then the ceiling. 
These are the original clocks of the Marshall Field and Company buildings as well. This is wow! In the Marshall building, there's another mezzanine level, but mezzanine court area. But this one has multiple levels, even more levels, and looks so dazzlingly dizzying. Just looking up. Wait, hold on. That's a historic clock. Wait for it. That. Oh, look at all that. Ah. Woo. Goodness is so cool. Y'all, I just came from the subway and I am culture shocked at Chicagoans. People here are just so, so friendly and so nice. Like, what is it about the Midwest that everybody just looks out for each other and it's so nice? And I thought, okay, I'm a city boy, you know? I grew up in Toronto, raised in Toronto, moved to Amsterdam, live in different cities like Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires, really nice, friendly city as well. <laughs> but in Chicago, this is my first time experiencing it. And I thought, I mean, this is like, I've been experiencing it for the past few days. So I thought it was like at first a coincidence, but more and more it's, I just think it's a thing here. So the train is completely packed, right? Like the Metro and people, for me to get on, people actually stepped out to let me in. And like, not just me, but other people too. Um, and then went back in themselves if they want to stay around the entry doorway spot. And that just got me so shook because people in Toronto, this is coming from a Canadian, okay? Like, people don't do that. People are like, people are not that polite. People are not that kind. And it's been happening to so many, to me so many times and to so many other people that I've seen that I'm just like, there's a thing here. People have such public courtesy. People are so friendly here. I'm at the historical Palmer House, which now has been turned into the Hilton Hotel. Thankfully, because it's still well preserved. I mean, this foyer that I'm entering right now in, how stunning the details of the ceilings is. Like, you can't get more classic Chicago than this place. And everything is accounted for from the light fixtures to how the stairwell is built and is still standing to this day. Oh my goodness. There's just so many things to see, especially look, the cloth up there. Okay, let me zoom in on a few of these things to show you closer and in depth at the beauty of this place. Ooh, that bar is really nice too. I love how I can just wander around a hotel and explore it without being an actual guest. I mean, don't get me wrong, I would love to be a guest at the Palmer House Hilton Hotel, but man, this is second best thing to just being able to explore these storied buildings. So the Palmer House is actually, from what it looks like from the outside, is three buildings attached from the above. Chandeliers, lightings, gets me every time. And look at this. I love this. Whereas the state of Illinois prides itself on the rich tradition of Midwest hospitality offered to tourists all over the world. Y'all, I still feel this today.
this ceiling, of course, is a masterpiece in itself. So this was commissioned at the turn of the century by Bertha Palmer, and it's actually 21 individual paintings all put together. Just the sheer size of it is jaw-dropping and breathtaking to make this whole lobby. And so the images of the 21 paintings put together are all inspired by the Empire Age. I know in this vlog I'm geeking out about the architecture of Chicago, but you just can't help yourself when you're in Chicago. This is the number one city in the USA for architecture and as an architecture lover, I mean, this is somewhat of like a heavenly paradise to me just to be able to explore all these places and see it for my own eyes and just showing y'all around here. Gosh. It's absolutely breathtaking. Y'all, this is a pumpkin apple butter latte and it is so delicious. It's creamy, it's autumnal, it's perfect for this season, perfect for exploring Chicago. Mm. Now this is what I mean by caffeine. Chicago to me is five things so far. So Chicago is are the kind people. The just welcoming, the Midwestern hospitality is a real thing, y'all, and is well and alive in Chicago. And it's not just hospitality, it's just common courtesy, respect, kindness to strangers too. I absolutely love that about this city. The second thing about this city is, I would say the architecture, hands down, straight in your face. I mean, look at this. Like, you can't, you can't, like, lose, right? Like, this is such a pure joy to walk down the streets and see this every single day. The third thing, I would say, is food. Like, food in Chicago is so, everybody loves it. And I feel like it's kind of underrated as a food city because not many people think of food when they think of the Windy City, but it is spectacular when it comes to the offerings of its local dishes and international cuisine as well. The fourth thing I would say about this city is the metro. The metro and public transit is just spectacular. There's so many places to go, so many places to see and do, just accessible from the metro, whether that is the CTA trains, going the L loop, or the buses itself. And then the fifth thing about Chicago is the art scene. Okay, so we have already explored. This is the Art Institute of Chicago. We're going to be heading to the Museum of Contemporary Art Chicago. And then there's also, which we already explored, the Chicago Cultural Center. And there's just so many places all around town, including the street art, to just take in all the fantastic work of art that the city offers. One of the things that I highly, highly recommend if you're going to be using public transit all around Chicago anyways, is to get the Ventra All Day Pass. So this is your pass to use public transit in Chicago anyways. But you want to get the unlimited All Day Pass, because that's like $5 a day, which I think is really cheap go as much as you want, wherever you want, on the buses, on the metro, and they're great. Like, you can use this to, I highly suggest to take a bus to go up and down Michigan Avenue because already from the Art Institute of Chicago, we're all the way up to the Magnificent Mile. You can see really great, beautiful, spectacular buildings all along the way on the bus drives. And there's like a lot of buses that runs up and down Michigan Avenue as well. It's like, I mean, I've walked this 
already this length, this breadth of Michigan Avenue so many times during my stay in Chicago already, but taking a bus ride allows me to see it from a different perspective too. This is such a great view of the city from the Museum of Contemporary Art. Just on the steps. Okay, now let's go inside the Museum of Contemporary Art. The space here is just incredible and the whole setup of the exhibition, I love this so much. Look at this. Yeah. We're doing this. All this right now. Such an awe. This is one of the largest spaces dedicated to contemporary art in the world, so way beyond the scope of just the US. Now, this Museum of Contemporary Art was founded in 1967, but the building itself, it moved to its new location here between the Water Tower Place in Lake Michigan, designed by German architect Josef Paul Kluhaus in 1996. So this whole museum is famed for hosting Freda Kahlo's first US solo show ever and also the first solo show for Jeff Koons. So alongside the collection of 2,500 plus pieces going back to 1945 is also a stellar lineup of performance art and talks about contemporary works. get more iconic than walking down the Sable Bridge in Chicago. Look at the Chicago River. Another thing that I absolutely love about Chicago is the River Walk of Chicago. So the River Walk is this huge passageway, walkway, that follows along the Chicago River. And you can walk along this passageway and then see all these amazing buildings along the way. So many locals run along this passageway too. I mean, I'm not a runner, so cancel that out, but I'm a stroller. So I love strolling this up and down. Look with the glistening emerald waters of the Chicago River. It's kind of crazy to think that this walkway, the River Walk, didn't exist until 2016 when the mayor really had this innovative idea to really take the river back and like 
make it more pedestrian friendly. Because before that, you have to think that you have to remember that the Chicago River is polluted, was polluted, and has been a long time, just not a facet of the city. So by creating the river walk, it made this huge part of Chicago accessible again. It may be in the Midwest, but Chicago and Northern Illinois feels far rate in the 19th century partly thanks to significant infrastructure improvements and today it sprawls both along the lake and inland to the west with a population of almost 3 million and a reputation for being one of the biggest transportation hubs in the U.S. of A. There's Dorothy and Toto as we're entering into Oz Park. So Oz Park is this playground slash green space where they have all these little statues of the characters from The Wizard of Oz. And a lot of people just come here, especially on a beautiful autumn day like this, and just stroll around. And we're on our way to Lincoln Park, which is the bigger park in this neighborhood. One cool thing I noticed about the city, so I had to look it up because I was curious about it, is that some parts of Chicago is two levels. So you can see there's a level here and then I left my hotel and then I went out and then all of a sudden I'm like, wait, I have to go up to the next level to... Uh, so there's like the city, some of the streets level is down there and then there's another street level up here and I was like, why, why is that? That's so cool. Like what? what What's going on here? So historically, you know, there was a lot of sewage, there was a lot of junk, trash down on the street. And they figured because of the rising waters and sewage levels that if they just rise the, start building the city up just a little bit higher, then that will solve some of the problems. But now we have, of course, like that was like centuries ago. And then nowadays, you have like two sides, two level cities. This is pretty cool. I just love this view of this underpass from the metro. But it just keeps on going. And then the train runs above us and cars can just drive down. This is like what also adds to the multi-level city. This Chicago fire department is so cute. I mean, it's like a little mini castle. You're telling me a fire truck is in there? I got a little Dalmatian dog too. And then the little, the postal service mailbox. A little note about Chicago is that this is a place where gifted comedians come to train, where hit podcasts are dreamed up, and where young artists kick off illustrious careers. Now, okay, while New York and Los Angeles often steal the limelight as the cultural hotspots of the US, this windy city is just as exciting, doing more than its share to keep the country's cultural offering bubbling. I don't know what that place is, but that is an eye catcher. Look at all these mushrooms just built alongside of this building. It's beautiful though. 
सिखा जा रहा है I'm so excited y'all so one of my favorite shows period is called The Bear and The Bear is filmed on location here in Chicago but to add to it it's also on this is the set it's not even a real set it's a real restaurant called Mr. Beef and you can try the sandwiches that they make in the show and basically they film up and down this whole street so it's really cool to see that this is the parking lot that they had the cookout in one of their episodes and now we're heading to the restaurant It literally looks exactly like it is on the bear. Like that's the counter where they work at. Oh my goodness. This is the front of the house. Oh. Jeru is ordering the classic Italian beef. They're <laughs> giving you a shit. Sandwich outside. Oh no, you ain't gonna believe this. Tell him that. The Tony used to work here. Work there. Only in Arizona. Only in Arizona. He knows the guy guys. Beef, you say? Beef. They don't say nothing to the boss. Cheeseburger, everything. Please. I love it. It's no nonsense, no frills. Even though such a big major show is filmed here, it still has that character. The twitches. Get the classic Italian beef and look how juicy it is. Outrageous. Alright, let's take a bite into this. Mm. It's just like butter. It literally just melts into your mouth. Goodness. Got some peppers in there. I don't think I've ever had Italian beef until now. This is this is legit. This is so proper. Mm. Pure joy. Wow, today my fanboyness came true. To be at Mr. Beef, eating a Mr. Beef Italian beef, and standing here. Holy smokes. It is so delicious and just prime. So, from Mr. Beef, right on this block, this is where that one episode where all those guys just kept hanging out outside and there was a whole shooting that happened right here it was really wild season one and then you have the irish bar right here I can't believe like it's literally real life so cool i feel like i'm on a movie set except this is all filmed on location here from this just this block just this block so iconic
I know in this vlog I've been having such great bites all over Chicago and not your typical just deep dish pizza. So we've had some yummy Chicago style hot dogs, some yummy Chicago style barbecue and it's this freaking phenomenal. I could eat this every single day. But you know me, like out of all my days in Chicago, I need to still have deep dish pizza. Even though I've been eating it like crazy, I mean your room just loves it so much. So but since we are going to have to get going quite soon, we're going to end the night at Lou Malanti's. And I'm just gonna get it for takeaway since in the other vlog we already had it for dining experience. So now I'm just gonna cozy up in our hotel room with it for to go. Can't wait to eat! I can't believe it's already our last leg of Chicago journey now. I'm gonna miss the city so so much. I mean, I'm ending it with deep dish pizza. So gotta do it right. Let's see. To open this. So excited for moving it in. Ooh, this looks good. Look at that deep dish. And we topped it up too, so we got the basically the base of the deep dish and then topped it up with basil, tomatoes, bacon, Italian beef, uh, jalapeno, mushrooms, extra cheese. So this is thick like we like it. All right, me and Yeroon are going to dive in and then put on our movie, but as always, subscribe and like if you haven't already Give this video a thumbs up, and then I'll catch you on my next adventure. Oh, I pull a piece of slice of this. Let me just do it, try to do it angle it elegantly before I make a mess of everything. Okay, like this. Ooh, it's hot, it's hot. And shimmy, shimmy. cheese okay I'll just take a bite before I sign off mmm mmm